Good morning, and welcome to worship on the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost. We invite you to stand and face the processional cross as you are able. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Come unto me, all who labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. I will give you rest. I will give you rest.
Beloved of God, called to be saints, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you. 
Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without you nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Embrace us with your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may live through what is temporary without losing what is eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Malachi. See, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day that comes shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who revere my name, the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. The word of the Lord. A reading from 2 Thessalonians. Now we command you, beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to keep away from believers who are living in idleness and not according to the tradition that they received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us. We were not idle when we were with you, and we did not eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labor, we worked night and day so that we might not burden any of you. This was not because we do not have that right, but in order to give you an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this command. Anyone unwilling to work should not eat. For we hear that some of you are living in idleness 
mere busybodies, not doing any work. Now such persons we command and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. Brothers and sisters, do not be weary in doing what is right. The word of the Lord. like to invite our children to come forward for the children's sermon. Oh. Good morning. I'm so glad to see your faces today. How are we doing? Do you think we're going to have a petting zoo type children's sermon today. Anybody want to pet the animals at the zoo? Yes, give them a pet. Give them a pet. You can, oh, here they come. Yeah. All right, so I had these two balloons, and right now they are, you brought an animal too, a bunny. Um, they're clipped on this little blue clip. Where's my blue clip? All right, we got a giraffe and a what? Zebra. All right, if I unclip this thing that's weighing them down, what's going to happen? Let's see. Let's see what's going to happen. It's still tied to it. Oh, it stopped. Good, because I tied the bottom. I was thinking ahead because it's such a high ceiling. One of them floated up. What happened to the other one? Yeah, I think you're right. I think this one must have a leak because it doesn't have enough helium to make it float. Oh, anybody want to pet pet this animal? Yeah, maybe the kitty cat scratched it, poked a hole in it. So I was thinking about these two friends. They were they were having such a nice time together, and now one of them is having a nice high view of the whole church, and the other one is stuck down here. Come on back down here, Zebra. Come on back down here. All right, I'm going to ask a question, and if you already know the answer because these came from your house, don't answer the question. Okay, so if I were to tie this guy to the zebra, do you think they will both stay on the ground, or do you think they'll both float into the air? You can tell me. What do you think? What, what do you think, Lily? Float, float, what do you think? Float, you guys have already seen this. All right, let's see, let go. Oh, you were right. He's got an upside down view of the whole church, doesn't he? Oh my gosh, you know what I was thinking about? Because when we first came into church, we said this call to worship and it said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And that made me think about these balloons. My burden is light. That's something oh, Jesus said to his disciples. Wow. All right, let's put it down. Jesus said something to his disciples. And there, that word when he says, my yoke is easy, yoke is something that connects to... I'll let it go again. A yoke connects two animals together. So we just use a string. But a yoke is not like an egg yoke. It's something that connects two animals together. And this zebra reminded me of Jesus. Okay, I'll let it go. If we connect our lives to Jesus, when we're having those down days and our helium is just not floating, or maybe we got scratched by our kitty cat, or we feel like somebody hurt our feelings, just a minute, just a minute. Jesus will help lift us up, just like the zebra lifted his friend up, right? So I want you to think about that. When we hear about the yoke, yoking ourselves to Jesus means connect our lives to him. Yes, what would you want to say? The whole church. All right, let's put our animals down and have a prayer, okay? Uh -uh. All, right, let go. All right, let's fold our hands. No, ma'am. And close our eyes. <laughs> No, we're going to have our prayer. All right. I'll hold this and we can pray. I should have known. Balloons in church is so exciting. 
Okay, let's fold our hands and bow our heads. Dear God, thank you for Jesus who lifts us up when we are down. Remind us always to stay connected with him. Amen. All right, thank you for coming up to my petting zoo today. You can head on back to your seats. Yes, it was a whole petting zoo up here, wasn't it? Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, As for these things that you see, the day will come when not one stone will be left upon another, all will be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. But when you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places famines and plagues, and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name. Not a hair on your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. The Gospel of the Lord. Oh, Lord, Lord, can I call you Lord? I know we've been sticking with rabbi and sometimes master, but, but I heard someone call you Lord, and I kind of like it. It has a nice ring to it. I just want to introduce myself. I'm volunteering myself as your new campaign manager. Now, the initial polling numbers are very good. I'm telling you, as soon as you came into Jerusalem, Everyone was abuzz with excitement. Did you like that campaign rally that I put on for you at the gates of the temple? Now that one was on me. Don't worry about any kind of compensation there. But, oh, everybody was shouting your name. They were waving palm branches and taking off their coats and throwing them before you. And your, coat, your colt was walking over them as they entered into the city. And these are people that don't have a lot to spare. So that means I know they're on your side. That crowd was so excited. I think I heard the rocks crying out that campaign slogan. What did you think? That was my idea. One word, short and sweet, Hosanna. It has a nice ring to it. 
And I got to tell you, whoever has been in charge of your road crew is doing an amazing job. Is it that Peter guy? I think I've seen him out there with you. You've been putting in the miles, Jesus. You've been going to the big towns. You've been going to the little towns. You've been going to the Jewish towns. You've been going to the Gentile towns. And I saw you went to Samaria. That's an important swing vote, you know. And I'm telling you, we have got a groundswell of support from everyone to from the poor, to the needy, to the widows, to the orphan, to this band of fishermen and tax collectors that you take around with you. I'm talking grassroots support for you. Now is your time, Jesus. And before you say anything, I got three reasons to convince you that this is the time. Number one, name recognition. Everybody. I'm talking everybody from out in Galilee to here in Judea, all around this city at the season of Passover, even up to the Sanhedrin, everybody is saying your name, Jesus of Nazareth. You have got name recognition. Number two, second reason this is your time, Jesus, is timing. Now, timing is everything, and I'll tell you, Herod, people are sick and tired of King Herod. Oh yes, his daddy refurbished this beautiful temple, and I'm telling you, it is absolutely magnificent. Have you seen anything like this? You don't see this every day. Definitely not in that little town of Nazareth. But people are tired of Herod. He's in with that family of his, and they're just all crooks. And I will tell you, just between you and me, the word on the street is he's so in, so deep, with the Roman Empire, you just can't even see the yarmulke on top of his head anymore. He's so far into their thievery. Number three, third reason, I think now is the time, and you are the man. You got the look, Jesus. You got that hair and that beard, and you got these piercing eyes. It's almost like you're looking into my soul. You might want to tone that down just a little bit, Jesus, but I'm telling you, your smile, I mean, it's so genuine. I can tell you've been practicing looking in the pond and working on that look. People are going to be painting pictures of you for years, if not decades. Just saying. And I know a guy who knows a guy here in Jerusalem. Oh, Jesus, he makes this beautiful papyrus. And this is what I'm thinking. Yard signs at every house in town. I'm thinking, imagine this, when we come to the temple to arrive for worship. Just imagine on either side of the portico, two banners unfurl on either side, Melech Yeshua, King Jesus. What do you think? It has a great ring to it, and I think that the people are ready, and I think you have got what it takes. Can you just imagine? Yes, the temple. That's right. The, the beautiful. Oh, I love it. Are you thinking that maybe this would be a good place for maybe a little, a little uh, press conference right here in the temple courts? No, you're saying that, that not one stone will be left upon another, but it will all come cumbersome down. No, no, that's, this is not the message that we, and actually, maybe we should take this conversation elsewhere because people are listening. Yes, they're talking about you, but they're also listening to what you're saying, Jesus, and uh, this is not the message that we're talking about. Let me think about the message. You've been going around from place to place, and what's that phrase you keep saying? The time is near. I think that's great. The time is near. Let's run with that, Jesus. And you're saying, that yes, that the day is coming. That's right. The day is coming when they will uh, arrest you and persecute you because of my name. Um, okay. Okay. And that the day will come when wars will rage between kingdom. Now, Jesus, this isn't exactly what I was thinking. And you're saying that, that the day will be coming that we will be betrayed <laughs> for following you and, and put to death by relatives and friends? No, Jesus, this is not going to fly here in Jerusalem. We need, you know what we need? We need to rebrand you. Maybe a, a softer, gentler King Jesus. How about this for a, a try? Uh, the three Ps. With Jesus, you will have nothing 
but peace, prosperity, and power. I think that will go over well. And the focus groups really liked that. Uh, we just ran a few little tests. Um, but I will say something like, uh, with Jesus, your popularity will skyrocket with all types, in their homes, in their synagogues. They will all love you if you follow Jesus. And then with Jesus, your wealth will increase. Yes, your business will boom, and you will be reaping in such a great harvest. You'll be building bigger barns to store it all in. And then with Jesus, you and all the true believers will rise to positions of power at every level, and you will wield it over all. No, that you're saying that, that following you is, is no guarantee of popularity or acceptance? Hmm, let me check my notes. You say that uh, the discipleship with you means learning to give more than receive, hmm. and that in order to be great, in your kingdom that you must humble yourself and learn to be the slave of all. Well, I don't know how all that is going to go over, but I did hear you say kingdom. I like where you're thinking. Yes, and you say your kingdom is not of this world. Okay, uh, Jesus, where are you going? No, we literally just got here. We just got started. Don't go and don't tell me you're going back to Bethany again. Let me just tell you, Jesus, people are getting a little tired <clears throat> of the amount of time you're spending with that Mary and Martha. Martha was in here once, lovely lady. And I will just tell you, it, it went over okay for a little while, but people are growing a little weary of you spending time with women, especially women of ill repute, uh, with tax collectors. Let me check, uh, yes, this is what we found out from polling indicates that uh, they would like to hear less about the sick, the needy, the imprisoned, the outcast, the orphan, the widow, the tax collectors, and the sinners. So if moving forward, if you could just try to stop talking about that and maybe shift to something a little more palatable, I really think it will help our cause. And, but you're leaving still. Okay, going to the Mount of Olives. Now, wait a minute. Uh, if we are going to appeal to the city folk. We're going to start acting like city folk. Come on, Jesus, let me just see if there's any room at the inn. No, we've already, we've already been down that road before. Okay, um, we'll go out to the country because I understand your people might feel more comfortable there. It'll give us a chance to regroup. This is what I'm thinking. We have a big agenda for you while you're here in the holy city. We're setting up a meeting with the chief priests. Now, much to my surprise, I saw your boy Judas going to talk to them just today. He already knows them. He's got an in. So we're going to set you up with a meeting with the chief priests. We're going to set you up a meeting in the courts of Pontius Pilate. That guy loves Herod. We've got to meet with Pontius Pilate. And then, after that, we're going to find you somewhere with plenty of room we might have to go outside the city gates, maybe somebody, someplace high on a hill where everybody can see you. We'll have plenty of room to just gather everyone who's packed into the city for the holy festival of the Passover. And that where everyone can see you high and lifted up, the whole world will know that the hour of your glorification has come and mark my words, it won't be two or maybe three days when everyone will see the rise of Melech Yeshua, King Jesus.
With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As scattered gains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. United with your saints across time and place, we pray for our shared world. Reviving God, keep your church active in its mission and ministry. Encourage bishops, deacons, pastors, and lay leaders to risk boldly in their proclamation and fill them with wisdom and endurance for challenging times. God of grace, Renewing God, as the Northern Hemisphere prepares for winter, make us mindful of the ordered beauty of your creation. Teach us to treasure cycles of rest and new life. Help us care for what you have made. God of grace. Loving God, accompany all who make sacrifices for the sakes of others. Safeguard first responders and active duty military personnel. Grant peace to veterans and heal any wounds in body, mind, or spirit. Bless our All Saints quilters and their Quilts of Valor ministry. God of grace. Amen. Healing God, your people cry out to you. Sustain doctors, nurses, and hospital personnel in their tireless work. Uphold mental health professionals and those in their care. May the sun of righteousness rise on all who are sick, especially Carolyn, Carolyn. Grace, Grace, Lynn, Lynn. Marie, Marie, Irma, Irma. Elizabeth, Elizabeth. Stephen, Chuck, Chuck. Claire, Claire, Pete, Pete. Asta, Asta, Debbie, Debbie. Tina, Tina. Kelly, Kelly, Gloria, Gloria. Tony, Tony, Bill, Bill. and those we name before you now. God of grace, Amen. uniting God, unite this assembly in its shared mission and ministry for the sake of the gospel. Highlight ways that we can work better together and give us patience to work through disagreement. God of grace, Amen. accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share that peace with those around us.
You may be seated, and before we actually go into our offering, uh, we're going to have some special music, and those who have their statement of intent cards uh, may bring them forward as you are able. If you don't have one but you'd like to fill one out, the ushers have some available. Some have already returned them to the church office or done it online, so we thank you for your gifts.
let us pray. Blessed are you, maker of all things, as you have entrusted us with all that you have created, now gather our gifts, nourish us with this sacrament, and send us to those who hunger and thirst. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior. Who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Christ has died, Christ is living, Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his solitary command, his life giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts. So that we and all who share in the body and blood of Jesus Christ may be filled with his heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sins, may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray in Jesus' name. Our, our Father. Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In Christ's presence, there is fullness of joy. Come to the banquet. Thanks be to God.
Christ shed for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, most gracious God, that you have fed us with the bread of heaven and given us a foretaste of paradise. Enliven us to be your body in the world and to serve those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. Gracious God, loving all your family with a mother's tender care, as you sent the angel to feed Elijah with heavenly bread, assist those who set forth to share your word and sacrament with those who are sick and homebound. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those who will receive this sacrament, and give us all the comfort of your abiding presence through the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a few announcements for us today are children, youth, and young adults have a lot going on this week. So there's Park Day today at Palmetto Island for our Little Saints. For our Kingdom of Saints, it's the party on the Wando today. Um, Wednesday is Wonderful Wednesdays for our preschool and elementary age. And at the same time, the young adults will have young adult Bible study in the conference center at 5 o'clock on Wednesday. There's plenty more announcements in our parish notes, so Make sure you read what's going on, and a thank you from your leadership for all those commitments that have already been made for next year's giving. If you want to make a pledge but you haven't yet, you can always do that online through the member portal or bring uh, your commitment card here to the church office. We continue with our sending hymn.
has run the good race of faith and finished the course, may you run with perseverance the race set before you. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Be a blessing in the world. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.